Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So today we're going to be watching Dave Chappelle special. This is an HBO special. I've watched a couple of Dave Chappelle specials on the channel now, like full specials where I've watched them in pieces. And so today we're going to check out the HBO special. It's only 30 minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and watch the whole thing today. I'm excited. Um, and also, apologies, I have like a sinus infection or something, so I'm a little, eh, you know, uh, but anyway, let's go. Well, yeah, I started when I was 14. That's when I figured it all out. I hope I don't get blocked. You're 10 whole years ahead of me. Yeah, but I have a short attention span. I'm thinking about quitting. I want to do something else. Huh? You know what my first job in the workforce was? I had to put on a, a cookie costume and hand out flyers on Capitol Hill for a restaurant called the Cookie Bag. And, <laughs> in the middle of August. And what kind of cookie were you dressed as? Huh? Was it a chocolate it's chip? It's the poor, hot, angry chocolate chip cookie. Uh -huh. I've never done that, but I know a lot of people who have done a job like that, dressing up in some kind of costume as some kind of food product, you know, and passing out flyers. I used to hold a sign for Little Caesars when they had their hot and ready's sometimes, but I didn't actually wear a costume, I don't think. I have a lot of jobs. Comedy half hour. That's cool. The music is loud. Super loud. And that music might get me in trouble. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you from San Francisco, please welcome Dave Chappelle. Thank you. I am slightly worried that that music is going to get me in trouble. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. What's up, San Francisco? I like your city. It's beautiful. I've heard it's beautiful. I've heard it. Tolerant beautiful. place. I didn't see much. I haven't seen my friend call me. He was like, Dave, having fun in Frisco? Hell yeah. See the sights? No. You want to go see Alcatraz? What kind of nigga in his right mind wants to visit a prison for recreation? <laughs> I got friends in jail I don't visit. I don't deal with jails. Don't deal with jails and I don't deal with police. Yeah. My house got robbed in New York. I didn't even call the police. I wanted to, but I couldn't. My crib is too nice. It's not that it's too nice, but it's too nice for me. You know how the police are in New York. As soon as I open the door, they'll be like, oh, he's still here. <laughs> open and shut case, Johnson. Oh. Apparently, this black guy broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. I messed up. Don't deal with them, man. I, I had to bail a friend of mine out of jail one time. You know, that was horrible. I was scared. I had to walk right into the belly of the beast. I tried to look as non-threatening as possible. <laughs> Hi. I'm here to bail out my buddy. Oh, okay. Well, while you're here, you do fit a description. If you walk this way, we can process you. I'd always get us. It's fitting those damn descriptions. <laughs> now, I could be bitter and blame all the police, but now I'll tell you who I blame. It's those <laughs> sketch artists. <laughs> they keep drawing the same brother over <laughs> and over again. Who is this generic man we all look like? <laughs> I want to know what they say when it's us. You know, I'm really be in that room like, did you get a look? 
you see the guy that tried to rob you? Yes! Yes, I did! He's about six feet tall, I'd say. Six feet tall? Yes. He had his hat on backwards, too. Good. That's good stuff. Hat was on backwards. Yes. He was black. Okay, big lips, big nose, hanging out. Say no more, sir. I'll draw him from memory. <laughs> you know, let me get my... There's, I, I'm going to stop it just for a second. Um, there's a show called The Innocence Files on Netflix, and it is about Innocence Project, um, some of the cases from Innocence Project. And there was one specific case where a woman was... Um, raped and I believe stabbed. I could be remembering incorrectly. And they had asked her for a description to draw the sketch. And after a traumatic event, your brain can, like this, when the sketch artist sits with a witness, they're, those sketches are so misleading and inaccurate just because of the way our mind like fills things in that might not be there or you, you know what i mean like you don't when you're describing it to the sketch artist you're not really remembering it exactly what it was um and in that case she had given a description and they arrested someone and he went to jail and it wasn't the person who had actually done it she was not really looking at the person when it was all happening so i mean this is funny but it is a shame that so much is put onto those sketches so much faith in those sketches you know what i mean I'll draw them from memory. Yeah. You know, let me get my stencil. I think we can trace this guy and save some time. <laughs> they get on the radio, calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a black male between 4'7 and 6'8. <laughs> between 120 and 380 pounds. He's wearing Nikes. Get this man! <laughs> Criminals are insane. I don't even know why people do crime. They want to catch you, they're going to catch you. Yeah. They can. They got forensics. You ever seen forensics? Those guys find clues nobody else thinks about looking for. Yeah. I mean it. You leave a pubic hair anywhere near a crime scene, <laughs> they're going to find that. <laughs> what, the, what the hell is this? Back up! Gotta make sure you grab those. <laughs> we got a match. Then they look at the pubic and tell all kinds of information. Hmm. Hmm. Looks like there was a struggle. Uh, <laughs> time of death, 307. It's amazing. I saw him get a do what time on court TV. It was embarrassing. It was. It was a sexual assault case. I knew the defendant was lying. I could feel it. He defended himself too hard. He did. His answers had nothing to do with the questions. They were completely irrelevant. They asked him easy questions. Were you anywhere near the crime scene on the night of the incident? Mother I told y'all we're at Burger King. <laughs> Then the prosecutor got fed up. Said, I've had enough of this. Called the forensics to the stand. Forensics was like, Your Honor, we are prepared to testify that we found the defendant's semen under the stove. I said, God damn. That's worse than fingerprints. You know, they find your semen. You've been there at least a minute. <laughs> but that's what I want to know. Under the stove, you find semen like that, or do you look for it? Like, do they walk onto a crime scene like this place is a mess? Check it for semen. <laughs> or do they just like walk in and slip? <laughs> oh my God! What the hell was that? <laughs> they find it on every crowd scene. It's like, what are burglars doing? 
Once we got the stuff, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. <laughs> I want to leave my calling card. <laughs> The semen bandit has struck again. Like the wet bandits. <laughs> I don't know this. Okay, that is just cut to another scene. So maybe that was a commercial or whoever uploaded this cut a piece out for copyright. I don't think this is actually uploaded by HBO. I could be wrong. When he was going and getting really energetic about what he was saying, he just took me back. I used to work at a Burger King and one of my managers looked just like Dave Chappelle. And this is back when I was watching Chappelle's show on TV. And um, his name was A.D., I think, but just like him. And he would uh, act like him. What's that called? Impersonate him. Sometimes he'd put like stuff, the white stuff all over his face and be like, I want my crack cocaine. Um, but seeing him get kind of energetic with what he was doing just then totally took me back there. Hilarious. <laughs> I don't understand nothing anymore. I don't. I watched TV the other day. Now tell me, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm crazy. Is it me? Is it me or do commercials have nothing to do with the products anymore? You think I don't even know what a commercial is about until the end. Everyone's a surprise nowadays. <laughs> you seen that commercial where the lady got the black eye? This lady come on TV with a black eye, she's crying. She's like, I smoke crack. And my husband beats me. And then a voice came on and said, got milk. I said, what the? <laughs> it has nothing to do with milk. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a commercial expert, but I make a better milk commercial than that. Yeah. Make it nice and simple. I just do a close-up of a titty. <laughs> milk right underneath. And if that doesn't sell milk, nothing will, boy. I'll tell you that right now. It's 1997. Titties are industry in 1997. They are. I know they are. I'm a customer. I went to a titty bar last week at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, that's bad. That is bad. Cause it wasn't like I was out. Said, let me, let me swing by the tea bar. No. No, I left my house specifically <laughs> to see some tits. <laughs> Can't judge me, there's breast in there. It's just what men do. If a guy runs up to you on the street, it's like, hey, hey, don't go in that building. There are naked girls showing their breast. Be like a white dude in a horror movie. I Better investigate. <laughs> I'm gonna wanna see for myself. <laughs> Titty bar's a weird place. I'm not saying it's a good place to hang out. I, I go there every once in a while. <laughs> but it's a weird place. They got weird morality. My, uh, I'm sorry to keep pausing. My manager that he reminds, that reminded me of Dave Chappelle was also really obsessed with the, uh, as he said, uh, the breasts, very much so. One time I walked into the bars, all these guys coming in, right? And all these dudes, the bouncer picked me out the crowd, started yelling at me. Hey, 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 buddy, sir, sir, you want to take your hat off? Huh? <laughs> it's disrespectful to the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can shove a 20 up her but I better not have a hat on when I do it. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Here you go, Bubbles. <laughs> Forgive me for the hat thing. You know why those bars are so popular now? It's because men don't know how to deal with women in reality. So sometimes we got to take the fantasy road. The reality of the situation is very grim. <laughs> Women have made a lot of progress in a short period of time, man. It changed everything. Can't deal in relationships anymore. I broke up with my girl. I'm out of Shawshank. I'm free. <laughs> I don't want to go back. Couldn't even argue with her. 
you should be able to argue. If you have an issue in a relationship, you should be able to argue that issue out, right? But see, ladies, you got to stick to the issue. <laughs> you guys take arguments everywhere just yeah. to win them. That's why nothing ever gets done. You be arguing about the dishes, baby. Baby, could you wash your dish at least before you put it in the sink? Premature ejaculator? Baby. <laughs> you know, why you gotta bring that up? <laughs> I don't even believe in that. I don't. If I man, it was right on time. That's what I have to say. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I can't fast enough. <laughs> well, I'm sick of being vilified all the time. <laughs> David, how could you? Yeah. How could you? <laughs> I was. <laughs> okay. Well, what were you trying to do, huh? <laughs> well, I beat you. <laughs> you gotta work on your time, baby. I'm down to a minute 20. <laughs> You're mad at me because I have different goals and sex. <laughs> I'm a speed. <laughs> I'm just trying to hit my best time. <laughs> it's like the Olympics. <laughs> and now for the dismount. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. My face hurts right now from smiling and like blushing. I don't think I actually blush, but. Oh my goodness. It wasn't all bad. It's never all bad. You won't stay if it's all bad. Well, that's not true, but I, I wouldn't. She, yeah, we had fun. We used to watch porn together. That's how cool she was. It, you, know, you know, it seems nasty, but it's fun. We learned about each other. She learned about me. One time we was watching porn, I'll never forget this time, the first, the first scene in this movie was hardcore. Two guys, one girl, going at it. I fast forward right through that. <laughs> I mean, it was too much for my senses. <laughs> the scene after that was these two girls and this guy. And you know, I stopped for a minute. <laughs> I had to see what this was all about. And she noticed. She said, what is that? Now, why, why does that disgust you? Two men and one woman. The men aren't touching each other, but the women are. The two women, those men touch each other. The two men don't touch each other. Why is that nasty to men? And I'll tell you why. Hey, ladies, you can call me crazy, but I think every, every straight man has a rule. That would be the one penis per fantasy rule. <laughs> my d is the star of my fantasy. Nobody else's d is guest starring in my. This is a Dave Chappelle joint. <laughs> you gotta look at the whole picture, man. Now you get two girls and a guy in a room together. That, boy, that's something else. That's holding and hugging. Friendship and helping <laughs> teamwork at its very, very best, my friends. Oh, my goodness. You get two guys and a girl in a room. It's the wrong kind of teamwork. <laughs> Damn right brutal, if you ask me. I'll pull her hair. I'll smack her ass. That poor woman looked like a chicken on a rotisserie and help me! <laughs> oh, that's so wrong. My life. That's so wrong. A wood chicken on a rotisserie. Oh my goodness. That was that was hilarious, but oh so wrong. Oh my goodness. It's too much there to stress you out. This whole world is just drug infested, hate infested, drug infested world. Hate drugs. I heard the worst drug story. You know what my friend told me? You know what he's dealing with? His landlord is hooked on crack. That's, that's terrible. That's pressure. Your landlord's hooked on crack. That means you've got to have the rent. Yeah. <laughs> you come around all the time. I got the rent. It's not even due yet. It's the 10th. Come on. <laughs> Let me just get $20 of it now and then uh, 
It's gonna be the rest of the other month. Every couple of hours, hey, look, I'm gonna need some more of the rent. This building's falling apart, things came up. Comes home early from a party. Landlord's in a crib going through his What are you doing in my house? Ah! Where's the sink? I came to fix it. It's in the kitchen. I thought it was in the drawer. I'll fix it tomorrow when I come for the rent. <laughs> you know what I hate about drugs? I hate when like people my age and older get hooked on crack. I hate that you're too. You're too old to be experimenting with the drugs at a certain point. You should be past that. Yeah. You ain't doing it by a certain point. You just miss it. <laughs> drugs are really for old people anyway. You're 75. You've earned the right. I'm, if I was 75, I'd do coke, heroin, everything. I wouldn't give a <laughs> I'd be walking down the street, they'd be like, boy, that old man is tripping. <laughs> Can't do everything. Maybe weed. If you're gonna do something, do a little weed. Smoke some, weed, weed's not as bad as everything else. No. So weed is a background substance. You know I mean, yeah. you can smoke some herb and still function. Mm. And you ain't crisp, <laughs> but you'll function. <laughs> Nothing higher than weed, though. I made that mistake one time. I, I was at a party, some guy gave me some He said, here, man, take this mushrooms mm. I took it I forgot all about it you know then a couple of days later I found it in my pocket I'm thinking why not because I'm thinking it's like weed some background mm. I planned my whole day out like it was weed mm. <laughs> I'll chew this up then I'll go to the barber shop get my hair cut and then I'll see a movie Shoot it up. I've never done mushrooms, shrooms, but a friend of mine tried to get me to do it a long time ago and talked about basically what you could do and couldn't do. So I have some familiarity of what happens and what it is best to do and not do. Going to a barber shop does not seem like it would be a good idea and with that specific substance. <laughs> I chewed it up. So far, so good. <laughs> then I was in a barber shop like an hour later. And it's funny because I was just thinking to myself, I was like, ooh, this stuff sucks. <laughs> Tastes like an athlete's foot. <laughs> I feel sick, but I'm not really high. <laughs> then I looked in the mirror. I saw the barber's reflection, man. It looked like, it looked like a big penis was cutting my hair. I freaked out. I started talking to myself, Dave, calm down. You're on drugs. This is what drugs do. Can you know that there is no way that a penis and cut hair. <laughs> but I started freaking out, man. I just couldn't take it anymore. I jumped out the chair, half my hair was cut. I didn't care. I, I didn't. I just gave a bob a handful of money. It was weird. The balls opened up. Anyway, I... <laughs> I ran home, man. I ran home as fast as I could. It's tripping. It's tripping. I looked at the clock. It was 2.42. I was like, damn. 2.42, I gotta sober up. I had never been this high this early. <laughs> I took a shower, I was still high. I said maybe music will do the trick. I listened to every CD I had, I was still high. Exercise, that's what I'll do. I ran around the block four times, still high. Took a nap, woke up, up. 
I looked at the clock, it was 2.43. I said, God, dang. <laughs> Here goes this song. <laughs> you know, that's just my grand my grandmother used to sing that when she cleaning up. That's a Negro spiritual. Black work song. <laughs> Not everybody know about that. I know. See, white people, you guys might whistle when you work. <laughs> you dig? But that's how you can tell what kind of work we're actually doing. Study that kind of <laughs> I do anything that has to do with race. I read a little here, see a little there, and I travel. That's always good. Uh, traveling has made me a, a racism connoisseur, if you will. <laughs> you know, it's different from region to region. Anyone ever been down south? <laughs> so you guys know what I'm talking about. And the racism down there is just. Ah, it's perfect. It's due to a perfection. It's comfortable. It's out in the open. There are no secrets in Mississippi. Everybody knows the deal. Never been to Mississippi. Morning, nigger. Morning, sir. Not up here. You hit the big cities, man. It's different. It's always a secret. And we should do like them. We should keep our shit out in the open, then a little. I mean, with limits. Yeah. You don't want to say whatever comes to your mind. That might be a little much. I have to stop it. Sorry for the abrupt um, jump in video. I was interrupted. Uh, anyway, moving on. Cities, man. It's different. It's always a secret. And we should do like them. We should keep our shit out in the open, then a little. I mean, with limits. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to say whatever comes to your mind. That might be a little much. White dude be walking down the street, minding his business, and the brother walk up to him. Hello, you white oppressor, you slave master, rapist of Africa. <gasps> Why, hello, my thick lip spear chucking friend. <laughs> Touche, hunky. <laughs> so, Whitey, what did you do today, huh? Oppress a new land and make the people there Christians against their will? <laughs> what did you do, fellow? Burn those big black lips on a crack pipe as you miss your job interview? <laughs> Easy, Whitey, you're cutting deep. <laughs> oh, this chit chat has got me thirsty. If you will excuse me for a moment, I'm gonna go to the Korean store and get something to drink. You slanted eyed, ruined the economy in our neighborhood by opening stores and taking the money out the community. Chink! <laughs> well, <laughs> good afternoon, you browse around but never buy anything. Suspicious looking nigga. <laughs> After a while, that might be too much. Yeah. You can't help it. If you're an American, you're a racist. We brought up from the beginning to think in generalizations. We never look at the individual. We rarely look at the individual. I'm a racist. I know I'm a racist. You know how I know? The other day, I caught myself being racist against myself. There's so much going on, I got mixed up. Forgot whose team I was on. One time I was reading the paper, man, this story came on about the, uh, this guy was suing a department store because they wouldn't let him play Santa Claus, you know, because he's black. And I was actually, like, relieved when the department store beat him. That's bad. But I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the idea of a black Santa Claus. Man, that shit would suck. So we wouldn't get our presents to the 28th, 29th. Oh! Sorry, I'm 
week, kids. Santa got caught up with some in Vegas. I had to sell some toys to get back. Yeah. Where are them cookies at? <laughs> y'all a great crowd, man. You are. I'm glad y'all came out, man. I'm, I'm nervous. I am. Not about the special. I just, I hope this don't make me famous. <laughs> you did? I don't want to be famous, famous. I want people to like me for who I am. Like, famous dude don't never know why people like him. That's why, like, if, you, if I ever make it, I'm going to have to, like, test people. Like, if I meet girls, I wear disguises when they first meet me. So they don't know who I am. Yeah. And then, like, on the first date, I'll call myself, I'll pick you up right from work. And then I'll pick her up in a garbage truck. <laughs> Just to see how she reacts. And she's like, wait a minute. Oh, oh, do I look like garbage to you? I don't see no goddamn trash need to be picked up here. Get that goddamn truck off my block. Who do you think you are? That's when I take my mask off. Oh, David Chappelle. That's right, bitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Makes me sad that it's over. Yeah, it's over. I hate that I had to stop it so close to the end. There was a situation that was funny. Um, I maybe because it was thirty minutes and I was able to watch the full thing at once because those long specials are like an hour long, and I watched them in two or three different um, sittings. That was funny. I think that's one of my favorite specials that I've seen from Dave Chappelle. So I don't know if it's because it was shorter um, and I saw the whole thing at once, if it was the actual material, if it was his energy level, I don't know. That was just, that was great. I enjoyed that very much. Let me know what you thought and let me know in the comments what um, the next special from Dave Chappelle is that you think I should check out. Like what are the other specials from Dave Chappelle? Which one should I check out now, next? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for the recommendation. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.